Welcome to episode three of Let's Build a Drum Machine. Just as a reminder of what we're building, we're gonna build something like this. This is the original version. We're rebuilding it from scratch in Ember 2.7. And we got to this point, episode one, we added simple sound, uh, a simple sound service for playing sounds. In episode two, we added song data deserialization. So grabbing the data from the URL and deserializing it into a uh, uh, model hierarchy. Um, so we're currently displaying the name of the song here, but we actually have all of the channel and all of the step data uh, within that song. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is going to change this link. Currently, it's just an anchor. And if I click on it, you can see that the app reloads. And if I add a second one, it would reload each time. Um, the reason for this is it's, well, it is simply a, a, a plain anchor. So I'm going to convert this into a link to and it links to the song root and it takes some query params. So the data is equal to some string and it happens to be this string here. So let's just copy that. Okay, and we will link to the name of the song, which is Arpeggi. Actually, it's called Weird Fishes. And this link to is the block form. So we should, if we reload the app now, see that we have an anchor here to Weird Fishes. And if I go back to the home page and click on it, you'll see it brings us into it without actually reloading the application. Um, so I'm just going to grab a second um, song and take its data and we're going to do something similar to the one above so i'll just copy that and this is again i'm going to grab the data it's going to replace this and this is called i might be wrong So now you'll notice that the URL changes without the app reloading as I click on those links. The model isn't reloading though, so we have to instruct Ember to reload when the query param changes. I'm just going to refer to the guides here. Um, I believe it's in templates. No, I believe it's in routing, query params, uh, opting into a full transition. So we need to uh, tell the root that we're, we should refresh model on a particular uh, param when it changes. So this is going to be the song root. And our query param is called data. So when that param changes, we will uh, refresh the model, meaning this model hook and other hooks will be called. So it will present a new model to our root. Now, when I click on the links, the model updates as as we wanted to. So we likely come back to this at some point and actually move all of the song data into uh, some array of model data. But I think this is fine for now. So I'm going to go to the song template, and we're currently just out putting the song name. Um, so what I'm going to do is iterate over the channels and then iterate over all of the steps in each channel, but do it in a very quick way just to get the data on the screen. And we'll come back in probably in a future episode to make this look good. So for uh, each channel, um, you know, I'm actually just going to do a table like the olden days. So we'll have a row for each channel. And for now, I'm just going to put out the, let me go to the model. Um, we have sound, which is like a kick volume and steps. So let's just output 
the sound. And if I reload that, we should see that this song has got four channels and there's the sounds and this has three. So let's also iterate over the steps in each channel. And we'll put in a column for each of those as well. So I'll just put that for now. We should see that there are our steps. And let's see what's in a step model. We simply have velocity at the moment. So let's just put in the velocity. Okay, so you can see zero means it's off, one means it's on fully and 0.5, it's kind of a half, uh, half velocity, half cent, half volume. Um, so um, I guess I could make this 100% and just align these in the center. Okay. Okay, seems to be good enough for now. Um, so we're now going to build this component here. We'll call it controls. Remember, generate component. And this is controls component. So we're going to place that up at the top of our song. Okay, there it is there. So I could put all of the logic for, you know, converting the BPM to actually triggering uh, each step move um, and displaying this in the state of whether it's playing or not in the component itself. but um, it would be nice to have this in a service so we could possibly reuse it elsewhere. So you can imagine that we could have a bar down the bottom which is showing what's currently playing or that you could navigate away from this actual uh, song page into somewhere else in the application and still have the song playing. So I think what I'll do is put all of that state and logic into a playback service and test drive some of that. And then this component that we'll build here, the controls component will be really simple and it will simply call into that service. So I'm going to uh, create that service and where it generates service, we'll call it playback service. Okay. So the first thing we'll build is this little display here. So these are 16s beats and bars. And I think I'll just switch to this um, to explain. Um, so this is the audio software that I use for, uh, I mess around with making music, but I also use it for recording. So you can see that my um, mic is going through this at the moment and it's a range of uh, compressors, EQs, DSers, limiters, and ultimately ends up uh, producing a really clean uh, audio signal. Um, if I zoom this up a bit, you can see that it has something similar at the top here. So if I press play, I mean, there's no music in it, but you can see that this is uh, increasing. So these are the 16ths, these are the beats, and these are the bars. And you can see it goes one, two, three, four, and this goes one, two, three, four, and they just continuously cycle. And then the bars uh, keep going up. So here's the tempo here, it's at 25. If I ramp that up, you'll see that the numbers go up uh, a lot quicker. So we wanna create um, uh, something similar. We'll have a computer property for each of these. Um, internally in our service, we'll have a tick count, it just increments, and then we'll derive the, the actual values from that. So 
this is something that we can uh, test drive. So uh, I'm just going to run our tests to make sure that they're actually passing at the moment. Uh, which they don't because we, when creating our component using Ember Generate Component, it creates some a default test for us and it's currently failing because we've modified the content of it. Let's go in and actually disable that test for now and come back to it later. Okay, so we have passing tests. So let's uh, test drive the playback service. So um, it calculates the bars, beats, and sixteenths. Okay, so uh, this will be our service, and and we want to assert that when we create one of these services, it will default to one one one. Uh, so so assert equals service dot get bars is equal to one. And we're going to do that for beats and sixteenths as well. So this will obviously fail. We'll have three failing tests. Uh, well, this is saying assert dot equals is not correct because that should be equal. Okay, three failing tests. Uh, I'll just hide the past ones. So let's get bars. Uh, let's start with sixteenths actually. So here's our empty service. Um, so it's going to have an internal property called tick count, which we're going to, when you press play, increment. And it will default to zero. So we're going to have a computer property called sixteenths. And it's going to depend on the tick count, meaning if the tick count changes, we will recompute this. And it's going to return. Um, so this tick count, as it increments, we will uh, we basically want to go from zero is going to be one, one is going to be two, and uh, three will be four and then five will be back to one again so really what we want to do is uh mod it by four we're going to return the tick count mod four and this should actually fail we'll be off by one as we want it to be uh, one instead of zero so we add one to it that should get our test to pass. So we can also set different tick counts and verify that it has the right value. So we expect this one it is two, for example, that this will be I should do one here. So when the tick count is one, this should be two. So we should have a passing test for this. And also when it is four, we should go back to one again. Okay, cool. So that works. So the second failing test is going to be for beats. So like sixteenths, this will be a computer property which depends on tick count. And we will return the tick count and this time we will divide by four and then mod the result of that by four that should give us the right answer of course uh, we need to add one uh, just like sixteenths okay so let's extend our tests so beats should be one here as well. Oh, and it actually fails. Um, so I need to floor this. 
So obviously dividing by four gives us a, a fraction. So we need to math dot lower it. Okay, cool. So in this case here, it should be two. Nice. Okay, so let's do, finally, let's do bars. So this will fail. As before, bars will be a computer property that depends on tick count. And this time we simply want to divide by 16. Um, so that will return a fraction. So we want to floor that. And as with the other ones, add one. So that does pass. See if these also pass. These should all be the first bar because we need to go to pass 16 to get into the second bar. So if I say 15 here, it should still be one and 16 would be two. I'll leave that at one to see it fail. Yeah, it does fail. Okay. Cool. So that was pretty easy. Um, so we'd like to display it in this format here. And actually looking at the test, these are quite verbose. So I think what I'll do is actually not test the individual bars, beats and 16s, but create a computer property that aggregates those into a string and actually test that. And I'm, I'm sure the test will uh, look nicer. So here instead of, so here we're gonna assert, and we just call it display, should be one, one, one. Okay, so that will fail, of course. And here we're going to implement a display computer property. And it will depend on the bars, the beats, and the sixteenths. So we're just going to return a string, which is going to be bars, beats, and sixteenths. And that should get our test to pass. And we should now be able to clean up our test. So this is basically testing the same thing. So now we want to test this becomes uh, one, one, two. I'm uh, sure that passes, which it does. And this one will become one, two, one. Uh, 15 will be one, four, four, I think. Yeah. And 16 will be Two one one. Okay, so that's uh, nice and neat. So we're going to use the display computer property in our controls component. If I go to the JavaScript file, we're going to import that service, which is called um, playback service. Is ember dot inject service. Okay, so we should now in our template be able to input playback service dot display. And now it displays one one one, which is the start of the song. So um, it would be nice if we just add a little button which will increment that and we can actually see 
those values update. So I'm going to create a button on click is going to be an action which we'll call next. So this is an action on our component. All next. So we could increment the property on the playback service and we'd say this.get, this.increment property playback service dot tickent, but I think it's better to keep that logic internal to the service. So instead we will uh, get the playback service and just invoke next on it. So our playback service will have a function called next. which we click, nothing is happening. Um, so uh, we're going to increment the tick count. So if we click the next button now, you should see that the value is incrementing as we expect. So the next function increments the tick count, which means that these three computer properties recompute, um, which means that the display computer property recomputes, which means that our UI updates. So I think I'll leave this video there for now. And the next video will likely build out the rest of this controls component. Um, if you've reached this far in the video, uh, perhaps you might subscribe. I'm a much better procrastinator than I am uh, a video creator. Um, but seeing people subscribing or commenting uh, is a real motivator for creating more of these. Thanks.